Good morning, guys. So I just want to walk you through a little, you know, morning routine of mine. I woke up usually these days around like nine in the morning and um, I went for a jog. I have been trying to get a little bit back more into actual cardiovascular training, jogging. I'll be honest, I was a lot more on point back when I was cutting because cardio served two purposes and, a, you know, one of them being health and the other one, a big one, being obviously weight loss. Since I lost one of those purposes, my you know, motivation hasn't been as high, but I have been meaning to get back into it because... You know, I even noticed when I was running, it wasn't the same, you know, I'm not as good as I was anymore. I'm feeling a lot less mobile. And I was getting winded very easily. I pre it pretty much looked like this. Stop. Either way, yeah, that was, uh, that was not uh, the best. So, but it's okay. You know, I'm gonna keep working on it. I wanna get my time back up. I was running like five kilometers in about 20, 23-ish minutes. So if I can stay around there, especially when I'm like, you know, weighing close to 200 pounds, that is pretty good. So now it's about, uh, like I said, nine o'clock and I'm having a little bit of coffee with a certain festive mug. Hashtag, I think it's like 53 days away. But so now I'm actually gonna get a lot of work done. I'm most productive, most efficient in the mornings. And um, you know, you can call it, I guess, intermittent fasting, but I probably will not be eating lunch or breakfast in my case until about 12 o'clock, maybe one o'clock. Now it's not necessarily for the purposes of intermittent fasting, it's more so for the purposes of just, I don't want to waste like time, right? I wanna, be, I wanna get up, I wanna go, I wanna be efficient. I'm always best in the mornings, I'm so productive. And then as the day draws on, I kinda get like, you know, less and less. And guys, I don't really, you know, a lot of people message me asking about meal timing. And although there are some, you know, there are some implications, in my opinion, meal timing is not even a fraction of, uh, you know, in terms of importance as much as, what, you know, what you eat will always be more important than when you eat. Right? In terms of this hierarchy, meal timing is like, it's like third or fourth on the list after things like calories and macros, which are king. But in a few hours, I'm gonna show you guys my first meal. And one thing I wanna show you today is, a lot of people ask me, how do you, like a lot of clients I get this, and they ask me the same question. I get this asked so many times. It's like one of the first things they ask me once they've been working with me for like you know one or two weeks. Uh, they're going out to eat, they're going out with friends, they're at a restaurant. There is no way to track nutrition because you can't like weigh your food and then look it up in my fitness pal. There's no nutrition label and there is no nutrition menu online as in the case with things like even like not clean places like Subway or um, uh, McDonald's, you know, they have nutrition menus online, which means even if you're eating garbage, right? Even if you're having like a Big Mac and fries, you can still Google it online, find the McDonald's nutrition menu, and then you know what you're eating. You may know that it's like a thousand grams of fat, but at least you know. But if you're eating food where you don't know, it's kind of problematic. Now, can you do it perfectly? No, and I'm gonna show you that in a couple hours that it's not possible, but I will show you a couple like ways around it where it's, you know, 80 to 90% is good and still better than just giving up and saying, screw it, this day's a cheat day. You know, that's, that's never a great option, at least not when you're cutting, and at least not when you're cutting for your first, you know, one to two months, when you're just starting and it's too early for things like cheat days, refeeds, all that nonsense. Now it's like, it's go time, and I will show you guys as we time travel forward, Breakfast of Champions, just kidding, it's pretty, pretty damn interesting and pretty damn uh, weird. So this is actually Korean food. So there's like, this is like 12, uh, you know, pieces of this kind of weird Korean style sushi. It's kind of similar to California roll but uh, not exactly the same. Then we have some like general Tao kind of chicken, and there's like some chicken cutlet kind of thing, and then we've got like a little, a little sesame ball. Either way, so it's just an assortment of food. Next up, we also have a protein shake. Now this one is pretty simple. All it is is about 50 grams of my protein's impact away vanilla, and if you guys are wondering, yes, I actually do weigh it out. You know, I don't just say like, oh, one scoop of protein, because that can mean what? 40 grams, 50 grams, 60 grams? Like, Come on, what are you talking about? Plus, I do about 150 grams of frozen berries. It's like an assortment of frozen blueberries, strawberries, all this good kind of stuff. Blend that up, and there, there you go. The reason I did this is because there wasn't enough protein in the actual Korean food by itself. Like, there's a little bit in the chicken, but it's, it's like that chicken that's kind of like, you know, it's like fried on the outside, and there's like a little bit of chicken on the middle. But like, I mean, how much actual like protein, how much actual chicken is there? It's not enough to satisfy me. So I had to have that as an actual serving of protein. That's my main source, and this is just gonna be a combination of um, carbs and fat. Now, a lot of you guys may be wondering, what the hell are the macros for this meal? And you know what, I'm thinking the exact same thing. Part of the reason that a lot of people think bodybuilding is so boring is because we sit there and eat like nothing but protein shakes, chicken breast, rice, and broccoli because it's so easy to track, right? And that's nice, it's simple, but that's boring, it's unsustainable. You want a diet that is both, you know, both effective 
Um, but first and foremost, it has to be sustainable because if you stick to it for two weeks and then fall off, what's the point? You need something which could you know, go with you forever, which is why nutrition plans and meal plans, they're nice, but if you eat the exact same boring, clean food every single day, you're gonna go nuts. You're gonna put a bolt in your head, which is why if it fits your macros is so effective. But in addition to that, you know, it's kind of, you're kind of limiting yourself if you only eat at places where you can track macros 100%, whether it be raw materials, like I mentioned, chicken, rice, broccoli, or it be like at Subway where you can, you, you can look up the nutrition menu online. That's not always the case. So um, here is just some random food, which I bought at a Korean store. There is no nutrition label. So am I gonna know the macros and calories for this 100%? No, it's, it's just not possible. It's, you know, it can't happen. I have to start doing estimates. But this is a good example for you guys because there's so many people out there who are like, I couldn't track because I was eating some random food. And no, yes, you could. Is it gonna be perfect? No, but you still could. And 80 to 90% accurate tracking is better than zero. What we are doing today is I actually went into my fitness pal and I found kind of substitutes, things that aren't 100% perfect, but it's similar to this. For the sushi, I am doing California roll. I literally found California roll and I counted it out, so 12 pieces which is about 510. Then we got, there's like this kind of like breaded chicken cutlet. I actually found online breaded and fried chicken cutlet. I'm estimating that this is about two ounces. So I'm gonna go with that, which is about 88 calories. Might be a little bit low, so maybe I'll put in three ounces just to be on the safe side. About half a cup of General Tao's chicken, and then one of these, those little like sesame seed. It's kind of like, you guys ever seen these? It's like sesame seed on the outside. It's like a little red bean pastry. However, I put in one of those, which is about 50 calories. This overall meal um, comes out to about 766 calories. Now, for this overall meal, including the protein shake, we are looking, this is a pretty big one for me, 1,048 calories, 77 grams of protein, 115 grams of carbohydrates, and 22 grams of fat, which is perfect because it's high protein, high carbs, and then a reasonable amount of fat, pretty much like a third of the fat for the entire day, which is good because I usually have three big meals throughout the day and then some high protein or high carbohydrate snacks, you know, in between. So that's it, high protein, high carb, a reasonable amount of fats. But I just want to show you guys this as an example of how you can eat weird food from random places and you can still track it. Not 100%, but close enough. Okay guys, let's talk workout commentary, specifically progressive overload. So you know that I've been focusing specifically on the bench press um, in recent weeks, uh, trying to get that up. My goal this off season, you know, one of my micro goals, like I have multiple, if I hit this one, then I'll move on to the next one. My first one, which I would really love to do, is 275 for four successful sets of eight reps. Um, it's kind of a random number, you guys may be wondering why that is. It's because Pretty much when I was in about third or fourth year of university, I had 275 for one rep, and that was like incredible for me. That was like the best thing, you know, ever. It's it, it was huge. Two and a half plates was a big amount. Thus, you know, afterwards I tried to focus on 315, which took me like a year or two to get to, but when I got there, it felt awesome. But another goal I had afterwards, and I hit that about a year, a year and a half ago, was I was able to successfully do 275 for, I think it was eight reps. And that made me feel awesome because in a matter of like, literally we're talking 12 to 18 months, I was able to do for one clean, you know, concise uh, set, what was just, you know, like I said, 12 to 18 months ago, that was my one rep max. What used to literally crush me and I would need a spotter and it was the most I could ever do is now something I can do on a daily basis for eight reps. To do that, it felt pretty awesome. And my third, you know, the third improvement, which is my, like I said, my micro goal for this off season is to do that four times, to do 275 for four sets of eight. This is why I'm like, you know, I could look at other people and see what they do and I think, okay, I'm so much stronger than them or I'm so much weaker than them and that's great, but we're all built differently. We all have different genetics from a, a bone structure, a musculature uh, standpoint, a hormonal standpoint. We're all completely and totally different. So I try to focus on myself. The fact that I, you know, was able to do what I could not do for one rep before and I'm just blasting out for eight, it was incredible. So it's what used to be your best for it to become standard, it feels, you know, astronomical. It feels so good. It feels like you can actually see yourself improving. And it's like, holy shit, I'm like a different person, right? I'm able to do something now with relative ease, what used to be literally unfathomable or like maybe a distant dream or something. So that's awesome. So that is my goal this year. And uh, 265 on the bench press, I got 8665. Um, the last time I worked out, which is the, uh, the footage you watched previously and the footage you are watching today right now, um, this is eight, 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 seven, which is so annoying because I had it. I, I, I know I had it, 
but I did not have a spotter. 90% of the time I work out alone just due to my schedule. It's very difficult to line up with other individuals. Also, I if I wanna to go to the gym, like from the moment I decide to do so to the moment I'm in the gym, I want it to be like 30 minutes max. So if I have to like wait for, you know, like my girlfriend or my friends, obviously I like to sometimes, but if it just doesn't line up, like I will do whatever it takes to see, not to sacrifice any quality of the workout. If I'm feeling good right now, if, I, if I'm feeling intense, if I'm feeling well rested, if I'm feeling full on energy and food, I'm like, let's go and nothing else matters. If you want to come with me, that's great. That would be nice. But at the end of the day, I'm here for one purpose and one purpose only. The gym is fun. The gym is awesome. But at the end of the day, I'm here to work. It's work that I love, but I'm here to work. I'm not here to like freaking talk about, you know, my day, your day, the recent gossip, who's dating who. I don't give a shit. Here's the weights. I need to pick it up. If I can't, work fucking harder. That's all that matters to me. And um, it's a good accomplishment because I was almost able almost able to hit that four sets of eights. And uh, I can't do it this week, but next week is a whole other story. Either way, guys, um, thanks for watching this commentary. And um, now there is something else I want to talk about. And that's probably, um, you know, the purpose of this video and what I'm probably going to call this video. I think I'm going to call it like my most controversial video ever or like, you know, controversy, something to get people's attention. And um, that is the election. Today is Monday, November 7th, which means the election is literally less than, I think the polls open in less than 24 hours, which is a big deal down in the, in the United States. And this is something I want to talk about. Now, I know that a lot of people may get you know, kind of offended or potentially, you know, consider this much of a controversial topic. So for that purpose, I'm going to end the video right here for most of you. However, if you are interested in hearing my opinion on this matter, if you, you know, if you guys think like, oh, Igor, what are you talking about? This is a fitness based channel. You live in Canada. What, what, you know, how dare you even mention this or talk about this? That is completely up to you. And that is okay. That is your, you know, opinion. And you are 100% entitled to that. And in that case, you know, the video is going to end here. You know, I'm going to play the outro. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. But if you are interested in hearing my opinion on this matter, um, stick around. Okay guys, if you stuck around, welcome to the least fitness related thing I've ever talked about on this channel. So right off the bat, I was kind of debating whether or not I should make this at all, but I reminded myself why I, you know, I don't want to say like, you know, toot my own horn, but I had some videos in the beginning when I first started my channel, you know, which did very well. I was, I didn't know what I was doing and I up uploaded a couple of videos and it was like the first time I was ever editing and it was pretty early on, like literally a couple of months within the inception of my channel and those videos did pretty big. I mean, one of them hit a million, the other ones hit like literally three, four, five hundred thousand. And part of the reason is that I was talking about controversial, you know, controversial stuff. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is that number one, controversial subjects are interesting, right? If you're going to sit around and you're going to try to be like, you know, like make these videos, which are just perfect and everyone's going to love it. And it's just like this puppy dog and sunshine and rainbows and everything is perfect. Chances are no one's really going to care. No one's going to give a damn because it doesn't, you know, get your blood boiling. It doesn't get like, whether it be anger or excitement or emotion, just doesn't, there are no emotional responses to that video. So um, that is a problem. And number two is even though they were kind of controversial, I tried to always approach them from a neutral, um, somewhat unbiased standpoint and always provide some kind of, you know, reasoning, whether it be, you know, like my personal reasoning or scientific evidence, scientific information, statistics, something to back it up, not just sit here and just, you know, blurt crap out into the world. And I'm going to try to do the same thing with this video, even though, let's be honest, it is in, is it, what do they call it, an editorial, or just like my opinion. That's all I want to say, you know, before I get any further, guys, this is completely my opinion. Um, whether you think I'm like a, you know, I'm brilliant in regards to politics, or whether you think I'm a dumbass, it doesn't matter, this is just my opinion from a Canadian fitness YouTuber. So it's pretty much like the least, you know, it has the least actual backing tour, you know, behind it, but screw it, I wanted to talk about this, this is something which I'm very passionate about. This is literally one of the things that I'm most interested in besides fitness. In fact, my top probably two or three um, YouTubers that I watch have nothing to do with fitness or nutrition or any of that, you know, cool stuff. It's all about, you know, the news and political commentary and things of that nature. And I know a lot of you guys may be thinking, well, you're Canadian. How dare you even talk about this topic? You know, what is, how does it pertain to you? And I understand that, but it's America. It's the world's biggest superpower from a, from a military standpoint, from uh, economic standpoint, from everything, right? Plus um, Canada and America, like you are, you guys are our biggest trade partner. And you know, it, it, the whole world is going to be affected by it. Let's be honest. Like, even though you guys are um, uh, voting on a president for the, the United States, in some ways you are voting on a president for the entire world, because whether you like it or not, 
Um, I'm not trying to blow like, you know, blow up America's ego. It will have implications on the entire planet. For example, when the Great Recession happened back in 07 and 08, it wasn't just America that was hit. The entire world was hit. Canada was put, you know, it was hit really damn hard. I was in school at the time, but I had friends who were a little bit older. They were like 22, 23, 24. Um, and they were entering the work world after, you know, getting their undergrad degree and they were just fucked. They were just screwed. They couldn't, not only could they not find a job because of the general difficulties that comes with entering the work world out of, you know, university, Everyone else was getting laid off. Everyone else was getting fired. Like, if you're trying to find a job, like, you'll be lucky if you can keep your job. So it was a very difficult time, you know. Um, housing prices were fluctuating. Everything was just going, it was just, it was a, it was nuts. And in addition, um, you may be wondering, like, what's my experience level? Well, it doesn't matter. It's, it's my opinion, which I'm allowed to say. And if you disagree with that, like, we can have a completely rational discussion. I hope you guys comment down below and let me know what you think. But the point of this video is to state my opinion, state why I think this way. And first and foremost, not tell you that I'm right or you're wrong or, or anything of that nature. Casey Neistat made a video about this and I liked it because he gave his reasoning, you know, he talked about it and I think, you know, he mentioned that it takes a backbone to talk about this on your channel because you may lose a lot of subscribers and you may get a lot of negativity and that is true and I am taking a bit of a risk with this because it has nothing to do with my channel but it's just, it is something which I'm passionate about and if I can get anybody, even like one person out there riled up who does live in the States to actually go out and vote tomorrow, then yeah, good, do it. You know, you have a voice, fucking use it because it's going to affect everyone. If I could vote, I would. And it kind of sucks that I can't because whoever is going to go into office is inadvertently going to have a huge impact on Canada and the rest of the world. So I'm almost kind of like, it's kind of unfair that I can't vote, but um, such that is democracy. So my opinion on the election and who would I vote for, you know, if I were an American citizen, to be honest, I hate both candidates so very much, and I am not alone on this. In fact, um, I believe statistically speaking, these two candidates are the worst in terms of unfavorable ratings, in terms of like the polling that have ever happened. I'm pretty sure Donald Trump is number one. I think it's like 63% unfavorability or something. Again, don't quote me on these numbers. I looked that up a couple days ago, but I might be wrong. And Hillary Clinton is better than that, but still not good at all. I think they are both about 50% in unfavorable ratings, which means that statistically speaking, over 50% of the country is saying like neither, or like I don't like you to both candidates. That means that and this would be my option if I could do it. If there was a third option besides them, the third party um, candidates, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, if there was a third option, which is just like a big red button under, you know, when you're voting under like Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and then it just says like do over, like redo, like you hit that, boom, we're going to be teleported back to the beginning of 2015. Nobody's announced yet. We're going to get completely new candidates. We're going to go through a whole, you know, completely new series of primaries, both for the Democratic and Republican side. If I could do that, I would. I want to start everything fresh. I just want a clean slate because this sucks. I do not like both candidates. Starting on Donald Trump, I am not a big fan of the fact that every single time he answered the question in the debates, and I actually watched all, I think it was eight or 10 Republican primary debates and obviously the three general election debates, Every time he answered the question, he didn't answer the question. I would be watching and waiting for any kind of specific answer. And I'll be honest, maybe like 20% of the time he did, especially on things related to like um, uh, trade and the economy, then he would get a little bit more specific. But about so many other things, he would kind of just dance around the question. Dr. Carson just referenced the single most important job of the president, the command, the control, and the care of our nuclear forces. And he mentioned the triad. The B-52s are older than I am. The missiles are old, the submarines are aging out. It's an executive order, it's a commander-in-chief decision. What's your priority among our nuclear triad? Well, first of all, I think we need somebody absolutely that we can trust, who's totally responsible, who really knows what he or she is doing, that is so powerful and so important. Okay, so right off the bat, he goes into a 15-second ramble using a bunch of synonyms for powerful and smart, you know, subtly hinting that he is said powerful and smart person whilst completely avoiding the question. And one of the things that I'm frankly most proud of is that in 2003, 2004, I was totally against going into Iraq. Where the fuck did that tangent randomly to Iraq come from? The biggest problem we have today is nuclear, nuclear proliferation, and having some maniac, having some madman go out and get a nuclear weapon. Okay, so the question asked about a problem. He spun it off into a bigger but yet simpler problem, and there is still no solution in his answer. That's, in my opinion, that is the single biggest problem that our country uh, faces. Uh, of the right three now. legs of the triad, though, do you have a priority? Because I want to go to Senator Rubio well, I, after I think, that. And I ask think him. to me, look, nuclear is just the, the power, the devastation is very important to me. So pretty much nuclear is bad. Wow. 
Look at that presidential insight. Such cunning and decisive problem solving skills. Oh, he's got my vote. This is a presidential election. I want to be informed. I want to know what your policies are and see whether or not I agree with you. And if you can't answer that question, I'm kind of creeped out by that. And I'm going to assume, I'm not going to assume that, oh, we, we probably agree. No, I'm going to assume you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, even though you may do. But if you can't answer the question, you may as well not know what you're talking about. And that kind of creeps me out. In terms of Donald Trump, my biggest issue is simply incompetence. Like, whether or not he's an asshole, a lot of people think he's a racist, a lot of people think he's a sexist, a lot of people think he's like a sexual freak, assaulter, I don't care. Fine, that's okay, I mean, that's a problem as well, but that's not my biggest problem, because if he does all those things, then he's a dick, he's a fucking dick, but you know what? I don't really care. I am not trying to, I'm trying to elect a president of the United States. I'm not trying to elect my best friend. If he's an asshole, that's great. A lot of people said that one of the big things that George Bush had, which is really going for him, was that he was very likable, at least in the beginning. And I think there was like a poll, which, you know, how many Americans want to have a beer with, with uh, sorry, George Bush? And it was pretty high. That's great, but I'm not trying to elect a friend or like, you know, my dad, like, hey, son, you know, have a beer with me. Let's talk about life. I don't give a shit about that yet. You know, you can be a terrible human being, but as long as you can lead my country well, as long as you can improve the well-being of my country, my life, my family, my friends, that is all that matters to me. Now, on the other hand, with Hillary Clinton, I do feel that she is not incompetent. I think that she knows what she's doing. I think that she has plenty of experience. But this, in some ways, the even scarier thing is that I don't know what that is because I think she's literally just lying through her teeth on 90% of what she says. So like I said, with Donald Trump, 90% of the time he doesn't know what he's talking about. And with Hillary Clinton, 90% of the time she does know what she's talking about, but we don't know because she's lying to us. So it's kind of like incompetence or, you know, uh, deceit, lying, and um, in some ways just flat out corruption. So it's like, pick your poison, pick your giant douche or turd sandwich. The whole thing with the email scandal, that was, you know, a big problem in and of itself. And I do think that she got significantly favorable treatment. I think that, you know, like in 90% of other cases, had someone else done that, they would end up like at least indicted, maybe not charged, but at least indicted and significant, you know, there'd be a big investigation. And, um, you know, them running for president would be like ridiculous and out of the question. The fact that they pretty much like Hillary, you know, the, the Clinton team kind of tried to sweep it under the rug and make it seem like nothing happened. That's kind of preposterous. It was a big deal. And in some ways, I do think that it would potentially disqualify her um, from running. And there was just so many other things. The war in Iraq, her like war hawk-ish policies, you know, uh, no fly zone in Syria, all these things I don't like. It's funny because she's supposed to be a Democrat. She's supposed to be the more liberal, the more you know progressive side of things. Yeah, she's sounding legit in some ways like crazier than Donald Trump. And in addition, I hate the fact that like literally, I think all of her policies are just fucking bullshit. The whole thing with how she was completely against gay marriage back in 08, like not just against it, but like, like smugly, like no. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage? No. No. Okay. And now she's just like, yeah, like, you know, like gay marriage and like peace and love and rainbows and all this shit. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. I support it personally and as a matter of policy and law. Now, if you're against or for gay marriage, that's completely up to you, the viewer. That's 100%, you know, your choice. But if you, if you and I have completely, you know, differences of opinion, but you stick to your opinion, you have reasoning behind it, I respect you because... You know, you're sticking to your guns, and again, you have, you, you're you not just doing this because you're pissed off. You actually have reasoning behind, um, you know, the way that you believe. But in Hillary Clinton's case, I really feel that she'll just say whatever it takes to get elected, to get more votes. And she's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in reality, she's like, oh, fuck this. So it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. The whole Clinton Foundation, um, all the scandals there, um, just legit, like, literally this close to just flat out bribery. And then there's so many instances where it's it's pointing to, you know, pay to play politics, which is pretty much, you know, like I'm not, essentially it's saying, I don't care what like my constituents, my, uh, my country, the people that I serve think, I care about who pays me uh, what, that's what I care about. And also the whole thing about her doing all these speeches for like all these banks and then pretty much saying like, I'm gonna be tough on the banks, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna regulate Wall Street, I'm not gonna let the, you know, the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008 happen again. Bull fucking shit, you're getting paid $600,000 from Goldman Sachs, why? So they can sit there and listen to you like, mm, what a lovely lady. No, that's crap. And I know about this stuff. I worked in corporate finance for two years, two years. So I know how like important this could be. And I do know that should you let it, Wall Street will literally fucking burn the states to the ground for an extra like 2% uh, profit margin. So the fact that she's saying like, I'm gonna regulate them real hard, but I don't believe you for a second, which is another one of the reasons why I think that a lot of people kind of like gravitate towards Donald Trump because he's pretty much saying like, I can't be bought. I have all this money 
and you know, I've never worked with this stuff. I'm not a politician, so I've never done this terrible stuff. People think they just want something new. They just want something new because they think that like, you know what, he might fuck us over, but 50-50, whereas with Hillary, we know we're getting fucked over. We know we've been fucked over. Why more of the same fuckage? Is that a word, fuckage? Well, I'll copyright it to her. So, you know, I don't like either options. Now, so you may be thinking, okay, well, what the hell do we do? I mean, I would potentially, I think I would just vote third party. Well, you guys might be thinking, well, why are you doing that? You're literally throwing your vote away. Both Jill Stein and Gary Johnson are polling at 3%. There's no way in hell they're gonna win. It's not about winning. It's about sending a message. I think that unfortunately, when it comes to politics and it comes to third party politics and um, uh, elections especially, it's one of those things that people are not gonna jump on. People wanna jump on the bandwagon, but you have to grow the bandwagon first. Even though they may agree and they may want to vote third party, they may think like, oh man, I don't wanna throw my vote away. I might as well vote for the lesser of two evils. So you're literally like a punch in the face or a you know, kick in the nuts. Like, uh, 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 like why would you do that to yourself? You will, pro if you vote for third party, your candidate will not win. I'm telling you this first and foremost, like it's, that's, that's not gonna happen. However, if one of the candidates gets like, 5%, right? If Jill Stein gets 5% at the end, that's gonna make people think like, damn, that's more than I expected. Or let's say she gets seven, eight, 10%. 10% is you lose, obviously, but that's telling people like, shit, this could happen. And then the next election, maybe they'll get 12% because people saw 10% and they're gonna flog in, thinking like, it's possible. And it's gonna continue, it's a snowball effect. But originally, if you want this to happen, potentially, even think of remotely about the possibility of this happening, you have to get that snowball moving. You have to get that snowball push. In Canada, we had something similar, actually. In our previous election, I believe, actually, I think it was the one before that, we have uh, we have multiple parties. Uh, the two biggest parties are the Liberal and Conservative parties. That's not like the type of parties, that's actually what they're called, the Liberal and Conservative parties. And uh, we have another party, which is kind of big. It's called the NDP, the new, I think it's the New Democratic Party. And that one was almost kind of like a third party. It did well, you know, some, you know, it, it, it wasn't like laughable, but it, no one really ever saw it as a contender, right? It was always considered a third party. In the election I just mentioned, again, I think it was the one a couple years ago, um, they came second. That was a big fucking deal. The guy who came first was the conservative party and it, it kind of made sense and it wasn't a big shock. But the fact that a third party came a second, imagine if like, let's say um, the Libertarian Party came in and they lost, but they came second place and then Democrats like Hillary came third. That would be a huge upset. That would be insane. I mean, it's not gonna change much because at the end of the day, like one of the two main parties still wins, but that's crazy because for the next election, people are gonna be like, oh shit, anything can happen now, right? Maybe like Gary Johnson and the Libertarian Party will win this time, or maybe they'll stay second, or maybe, you know, Democrats will get back into second, or maybe Jill Stein and the Green Party will come into third, or it just, be it becomes, it's no longer static. It's no longer just like pick two sides of the same shitty coin. And that's so interesting. And I thought that was so awesome that happened for Canada and obviously they didn't win, but it gave us choice and it means like, oh shit, we're not a two party system. And that's, that's interesting. I think that's, that's a good thing. So that's it guys, that is my opinion. And the one thing I wanna end, which is pretty much the exact opposite of Casey Neistat's video is I don't care who you vote for, just please go and vote. I am 25 years old. I'm considered, I think I'm considered a millennial and our generation is so apathetic towards towards the elections. And I think that is a big, big problem because it's pretty much saying that our voice is not heard. And that kind of annoys me. And I know this is gonna be a very, a very dark thing to say, but we're gonna be on this planet a lot longer than the old people who vote in like record numbers, right? For example, even things like climate change, a lot of people think, like I think one of the things that pisses me off is that the people who are making decisions in regards to climate change, I think both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are at a 69, they're 69 or 70 years old, which means, again, I'm sorry, it's very dark, but neither of them will be around anywhere near the time that anything in terms of climate change actually happens. If it happens, if you think it's gonna happen, which it will, because let's be honest, like I, I always, I always hate when I'm, like, I'm trying to be so, like, so nice, like you, whether you think, it, or whether you think it's gonna happen or not, yes, it's fucking gonna happen, okay? Like it's, it's unanimous in terms of the scientific community. So when it does happen, none of these people who are making the decisions, none of the Congress, the Senate, none of the people are gonna be around. You know who's gonna be around? Potentially me, potentially, and most likely my kids or my kids' kids. So we need to, I'm not saying our vote counts more, but it counts more for us. It counts more for me because I am gonna be voting on stuff which could potentially set the country on a course for, for and it's not gonna change just four years. It could change four years, and then that four years can change the next four years. And it could, you know, it's like these two paths. So you're not just voting on the next four years, you're changing on, you're, you're deciding on which path, you know, your country's gonna follow potentially for, for decades or centuries. So it is a big, 
it is a big deal. So I definitely advocate that you guys vote. Whether you disagree with me, whether you think I'm an idiot, whether you think I'm a jackass, that's fine. It's completely up to you. But make your voice be heard. I would totally vote if I could, but I can't. So I will be sitting here in Canada. I will be watching uh, tomorrow. So don't fuck this up.